five easy ways to improve cohesion in the IELTS writing task. My name is Ben Worthington and you've probably heard my voice and uh, maybe some other English learning websites and today we're going to focus entirely on improving cohesion and the good thing is it's relatively easy easy so let's start let's get straight to it so first of all I want to look at collocations and especially four word collocations these are really interesting facets of the English language right first of all like I'll go over this pretty quickly all right first of all they uh, make you sound more natural and then more cohesive because they just flow and you're, the, the listener, probably a native speaker, is expecting this combination. So they don't have to focus that much, it just flows. So if you can incorporate these into your writing, it's going to sound much better. And most importantly, you're not going to make as many mistakes because you've got a string of words which are perfect together and therefore there's less chance of making a mistake okay so you're reducing the error using grammatically perfect constructions this will increase your score for grammatical range and accuracy now if you have a pen write these down write these down for a number of reasons firstly it will help you remember them secondly you can use them in your essays when you start writing one, hopefully today, hopefully this afternoon, maybe, or this morning, whatever. And thirdly, it's good practice. It's good practice for your listening, for associating sounds to words. And maybe if there's a new word there, you'll understand how it's pronounced first rather than looking at it, which can be misleading sometimes. So copy these down maybe due to the okay maybe due to the all right this may be due to the various aspects of the new technology okay next one there are a number of five word collocation there there are a number of reasons why yep there are a number of different sources of pollution Next one, is one of the most, is one of the most. This is really helpful actually, because not only is it um, superlative, but it's also, you can use this in the examples, which we'll look at in a second. For example, London is one of the most densely populated cities in the world. If you're writing these down, I'd recommend you write down the example sentences I give as well, so you, can use them in the context and maybe write a few sentences of your own um, using the collocations. So next one is one of the most important. Russia is one of the most important natural energy res uh, suppliers in the world. Okay, next one play an important role in play an important role in the United States plays an important role in administering trade contracts or enforcing trade packs for example the results of this study this is another good one the results of this study because if you're given an example sometimes you will use studies from the IMF and then you can say the results of this study or these studies show that um, gender inequality is still a dream to be reached or something like that. Now I'll go over the next ones a little bit faster. It can be observed that this may be due to and that's just another way to say because but you're saying because in five words this may be due to okay 
And then if you really want to go a little bit further, you can say this may be due to the fact that 9 out of 10 people in Britain love the weather, whatever. Okay. <laughs> uh, the results of this study, like we said before, an important role in the, okay, an important role in the, Europe has an important role in the agreement of trade deals internationally for example um, in the case of in the case of Italy conditions were changed drastically for example in the case of or in the case of the third world blah 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 okay now these ones are the I have a list of the 10 no I think of the 20 most common four word collocations found in academic texts and I extracted the ones I thought most useful for an IELTS essay so these ones are very common in academic writing so another reason why you should be writing them down now let's have a look at some of these collocations actually in the introduction to your IELTS task to write in so we're going to look at is one of the most and due to the fact that so we could say economic development is one of the most critical elements of government policy due to the fact that blah 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 okay so and here we can just change that to any topic if we have a question about education public and private for example we could say public education is one of the most important challenges facing the western world today next sentence this may be due to the fact that blah 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 okay and if we are going to use this in our introductory sentence to the essay which I think is a good idea because in that first sentence 50% of the words you use are going to be perfect absolutely perfect which is a very good way of starting your essay now if you are going to use it be careful because you have to adapt it singular plural agreement so if you're talking about health issues as your topic as uh, that if that's the question you're given you would say health issues are some of the most important matters facing the West due to the fact that okay so we adapt it now if you've got a question about pollution or CAD congestion in the city city congestion you would say environmental issues are some of the most common challenges facing developing countries in Europe nowadays just change that so in environmental issues are some of the most common challenges facing developing countries in Africa nowadays it can be observed that another collocation for your second sentence it can be observed that these problems largely stem from mismanagement government corruption or whatever yeah so good work there and now perhaps the most useful use of the collocations not only in setting off our task 2 essay to a perfect start but we can also use them very effectively in the examples now examples are required for practically all of the task 2 questions so it makes sense to master this skill because it's going to be necessary and you can use it for two of your body paragraphs so if you can get this skill under control learn how to give a good um, example then you're going to get more points in the bag you're going to guarantee yourself more points and the good thing is that giving an example is largely is pretty much the same way you give um, let me rephrase that giving an example 
You're going to give it the same style or similar structure for every essay you write, especially an IELTS essay. So you can learn a, a set structure and then just adapt it to any topic. I'll show you how. So we can say, for example, it should be noted that recent studies by the AM, IMF show that London is one of the most important financial centers in the world. This may be due to the okay so the collocations I use there are for example comma it should be noted that then I say recent studies by the IMF by the uh, WWF Wildlife Fund by the uh, OECD whatever okay show that London Paris I don't know um, Marrakesh wherever um, is one of the most important uh, cultural centers in the uh, continent in the Western world or whatever yeah whichever um, so that structure you can use and once again 50% of the words used in that example are the collocations and they're perfect grammatically perfect so You've just guaranteed yourself good a good um, quantity of points by using that set structure. Let's have another look. Just a word of warning: avoid using the same collocations that you use in your introduction that you use in your example. Change them. Change them. Okay, so if you've used there are a number of eyes, the most important or whatever, don't use it in your example because the examiner can't give you points for that. You have to show a range. So let's go to the next example. For instance, there are a number of, yeah, for instance, there are a number of studies by various governmental bodies that show that, yeah, in fact, that's quite universal. You could use that in practically any essay. For instance, there are a number of studies shown by uh, there are a number of studies by various governmental bodies that show that I don't know uh, equality in the workplace, that show that a clean air policy, that show that you can put anything in there plays an important part in the society, in the global economy, in the pop in the socio demographic makeup of the country, whatever. Yeah. And then once again, this may be due to the fact that okay, so if you're writing these down, I want you to be using them in your the next essays you write. Now, another way you can improve the cohesion and coherence is repetition. And you can do this by repeating key nouns in your paragraph. So if you're writing an essay about, I don't know, currency stability, you can use currency stability quite a few times. And that's okay if you're going for a lower grade, that's okay. However, if you're going for a higher grade, band seven, then what you want to do is use the same policy but try and I mean by uh, repeating it but use synonyms and show the examiner that you've got a very wide vocabulary so if I was writing about air pollution I would say these fumes the smog air contamination this serious issue yeah I would instead of if, for example if I've run out of synonyms I would say this serious issue um, needs to be dealt with by the government yeah and then I could say it needs to be dealt with severely using regulations from the state okay so we've got fumes smog air contamination then if we're running out we can say this serious issue all right now then transition signals transition signals is just a fancy word for um, first second next finally like they're like traffic signs 
yeah they're just indicating where you have to go and giving directions to the reader and if the reader's got directions then it's going to be much easier to follow the actual writing so we um so during the paragraph uh, during the right during your essay you can say first second next finally to introduce a conclusion you can say clearly in summary in conclusion and then to introduce the result you could say um accordingly as a result of as a consequence of a few different ones there i'm sure you've heard them before and sorry these ones usually go at the beginning of the sentence okay now then use the fourth point is using consistent pronouns now this means that you avoid changing from singular to plural let me give you an example one essay might one example might be you can see how students have changed over the last decades in the 60s the student was often seen as struggling in economic hardship now if i was editing this if i was correcting it i would write it can be seen how students have changed over the last decade in the 60s they were often seen as struggling in economic hardship now first of all i changed it from second person to uh, to the passive i used the passive structure and i said it can be seen yeah because you can see is quite conversational the next change i did was i um i kept it in the plural just like in the original because it said in the original you can see how students have changed over the last decade I kept that the same and then I changed the second one which is in the singular it says in the first version it says in the 60s a student was often and then I changed it in the 60s they were often seen as struggling in economic hardship I did this just to keep it consistent and it's easier to follow and if it's easier to follow I'm improving the cohesion now this rule you may need to bend it a little bit just to show the examiner that you've got a wide range of vocabulary but perhaps the most important thing here is just avoiding the you can see and giving it a more academic tone now then final idea is uh, not final idea final suggestion to keep your essays very coherent and cohesive is just to stick with one idea in each paragraph because at the end of the day you're going to get points for your english not for the quality of your ideas so you just put one idea that's valid and it makes it easier to follow and just as a side note this isn't in the notes but i just remembered um one idea and even just one viewpoint because if you've got one for you viewpoint you're not jumping from side to side from different angles trying to demonstrate the argument in different ways and um if you're a very good writer then it could be an option to do this but in general i tell all my students all my online students that just go for one point of view it's easier to write it's easier to follow and you're going to pick up points for your cohesion and coherence so and this is especially important because in the IELTS task 2 you've got 250 words so it's um yeah there's not much at all now then so if you do want any more help from me just go to the website you can sign up to the mailing list i'm sending out advice sample essays uh, tips to improve the clarity and sending out lots of things every week to help the students and uh, i'm quite happy because uh, julia she got 7.5 she's off to cambridge you've probably heard the interview um vitali he got in contact 
he took his exam twice. Uh, first, he got a 7.5. He wasn't happy. So he went back in March and got an 8. And th think about that. Before, before he was using the sentence guide, he just got a 6 and a 6.5. So well done, Vitali. He did excellent there. Um, yeah, so if you also want to improve your grade and if you're fed up, frustrated, just send me an email. I always reply. At the most, it's a day later. But yeah, just get in contact and we can do it. Really, I've got lots of success now. I'm quite happy about it. So please just send me an email. And also, well done, Cornelia. She got the 7.5. She's off to New Zealand. You might have read the review on the on the website. So it's it's not impossible. You just need to get your head down, get some work done, get in contact if you if you're having any problems, find help. You're not in this alone. There's lots of students doing it and lots of teachers willing to help as well. So just keep going. All right, thanks for listening.